So what's the best type of property to get started with right now in commercial real estate investing? Should you start with mobile home parks, self-storage, apartment buildings, industrial, office, retail, hotels? What is the number one investment vehicle in commercial real estate for 2021? Uh, I believe what we're going to see is that uh, apartments, multifamily, large apartment buildings have turned out to be the best investment that overall are going to take the least hit through uh, 2021 and beyond. Uh, the number one thing everybody needs is housing. So apartment buildings are first and foremost. Mobile home parks are another good one. The problem with mobile home parks versus an apartment building is scale. Um, you're leasing lots. You really don't want to do the park owned homes. You want to just lease the dirt. It can be a good investment, but you need a bunch of them. You need um, big parks and you need a lot of them to generate any kind of income. The financing is a little bit different for mobile home parks than it is for apartment buildings. Apartment buildings are way easier to finance. It's way easier to raise capital um, for apartment buildings, especially bigger, nicer apartment buildings. And even the value add turnaround situations, those are a little easier to finance and raise capital for. And then if you're developing, that's uh, one that's one of the easier assets types of assets, types of real estate that you can get money from banks to finance the development. Uh, so multifamily has a lot of advantages that the other types of real estate in commercial real estate do not have. Financing is one, raising capital is another. Scale is the biggest one. In multifamily, you can really scale up fast. You can start small. Anything over five units is multifamily, so you can definitely smart start small. Um, they use the property's income to qualify for the loan versus the individual. So if you're buying residential, duplexes, triplexes, quads, uh, they're going to look at the income, but it's residential in nature in terms of the loan, unless you're getting a commercial loan from a local commercial bank. Um, they're going to look more at the borrower in terms of your debt to income, your financials, things like that, than they will the property. When you get into commercial and multifamily over five units, it's all about the property and the income of the property, and you can finance as many of them as you want. You can have 10, 50 to 100 to 200. You can have as many properties as you want when you're looking at commercial and residential. If you're doing residential loans, there are some limits there with the types of uh, residential loans you can get for income producing property. So uh, much easier to scale, much easier to finance, much easier to raise capital for, a whole lot more upside potential. Office, retail, hotel, uh, you definitely do not want to mess with those right now unless you really know what you're doing. You have some deep pockets. And uh, a lot of that depends on the market and the location of those properties. There can be some opportunities there. But uh, the retail landscape is changing as we get uh, further and further along into the future. That's going to continue to change for retail, restaurants. The hotel industry uh, is always changing and evolving. It will bounce back once we get through the pandemic and things get a little bit back to normal and people start traveling again. Resort destinations did not necessarily suffer as much as business districts for hotels. So there's still some opportunities out there in the hotel sector. One great opportunity is converting old motels and hotels into uh, affordable housing units, apartment units, micro apartments, things like that. If you haven't heard that term, micro apartment, go study that. That's where uh, office buildings and hotels, motels are being converted into uh, efficiency type apartments in different areas. Those are great student housing uh, properties and assets for a student housing portfolio. And that's another area to look into is student housing. Student housing uh, is a, a good opportunity in a lot of areas. Uh, there's a demand for housing in a lot of areas from a student housing standpoint, but there's a lot of different business models around that uh, where you can rent by the room, by the bed, by the unit, to the university, to the tenants individually. So there's a lot of different ways to skin the cat when it comes to student housing and student housing rentals. Self-storage is a uh, good business model. But the thing about self-storage is if things get really, really bad in the economy, people do not have to store their goods, but they do need somewhere to live. So housing is always going to reign supreme in terms of an investment vehicle. People always need housing. There's always a need and a demand for good quality housing, safe housing. Uh, when it comes to storage, people do like to store their stuff, and it has been a... Um, uh, a recession resistant business it's done well uh 08 09 the self-storage industry did well and as it's been on a tear lately uh through the 2000s and into the to the early you know 2020s um 
self-storage is still a good investment and it's done well through the pandemic. But at the end of the day, if the chips go down, self-storage is something that could be at risk because people do not have to store stuff, but they do have to have somewhere to live. They do have to have food. They do have to have clothing, shelter. So when you're thinking about the types of properties to invest in, different types, um, those are some things to think about. I think apartment buildings, multifamily are going to show that they did the best through the pandemic and through the 2020 and 2021 timeframe at the end of the day. I think those are going to prove out as some of the best investments and they are still proving to be some of the best investments you can make moving forward.